most of science bullshit? I think not. And I think there are a bunch of reasons why we can be pretty confident that, that science is nevertheless working pretty well. Um, one of them is simply that most of the hypotheses that people test, it's a sort of an argument against Ioannidis, most of the hypotheses that people test are not super unlikely. I've only got, I've got a limited amount of money. I'm not going to go chasing after wild geese in my, uh, in, in my lab with my limited funds. I'm going to pick something that I think is relatively likely to give me a publishable result. And if, so if you, if, you know, imagine if you test 400 patients for a common disease. Let's take herpes simplex 1, 54% of Americans have herpes simplex 1, cold sores. If you test for that, um, then what you're going to find is, oh, I'm missing a little. We should, have, we'd ha we should have some false positives over here. There they are. We should have a couple of false positives as well. So I'm going to get a whole bunch of true positives. I'm going to pick up a couple of false positives. Um, and the same thing happens if I test 400 likely hypotheses. So, you know, if these hypotheses are 50-50 likely to be true, then, uh, then same thing. I'm going to pick up, uh, I'm going to pick up a whole bunch of uh, um, true things. And if I've got a 5% confidence level, then I'll, you know, then I'll have some that aren't true as well. But, but fine. Uh, most of them are still true. So that, you know, that, that's one bit of reassurance. Another thing is that science and, and replication, replication studies are cumulative. When I do a, when I write a paper, no one goes and sets out to replicate the paper exactly. You can't get, you can't get funding to do that. But if my paper is interesting, people try to build on it. So, you know, when someone publishes a paper and says, hey, there's this thing, CRISPR, that allows us to insert DNA into, into, uh, you, you know, in sort of targeted places and basically rewrite the genome, even if people don't sit down and try to replicate the initial experiments, you've got research groups and, um, and biotech companies and stuff around the world trying to get this thing to work in their own systems. And so if it really doesn't work, I mean, it's such a useful thing. And so if it really doesn't work, people are going to find out quite quickly because everyone's trying to get it to work. And they're saying, oh, well, damn it, it doesn't work. Um, and so even though no one's really setting out to directly replicate most findings, people do build on those findings. And if they're wrong, then that comes out in the process of trying to build on these things. So that's another sort of cause for comfort. There's multiple ways to deviate from a null hypothesis and still get an interesting result. I gave you this kind of hypothesis testing framework where I either accept or reject a null hypothesis. But I might measure the effect direction. Maybe I say, OK, this antidepressant made depression better, made it worse, or didn't change it. And if I do that, I mean, suppose there's really no effect, and I can publish any of the results that are, that are, that are statistically significant, then of the statistically significant results, half are going to make it better and half are going to make it worse. And so what I'll have is a collection of papers that get published that are kind of split. And from that, we can see the signature of this, there really actually being no effect, right? So this, is, this can be helpful. Contrarian results become interesting. Once everybody believes in some particular psychological phenomenon or whatever, if I, you know, if, if I come up with this psychological phenomenon, no one's ever thought about it, and I test it, and it doesn't work, nobody cares. But once everybody believes that it works, if I do a carefully controlled experiment that shows that it doesn't work, that is now big news. It's not boring anymore. It's very interesting. People love conflicts and arguments and, and, and you know, that kind of thing. So, so people care a lot. And you can publish that stuff. It's still tricky. But it, you can publish it. It gets attention. It gets exciting. And so science, um, you know, if people start to build up a series of false positives that are indicating that one sort of result is is true, even though it's not, now it becomes publishable to say, oh, and actually that doesn't work. And so, uh, so that's kind of self-correcting. And then finally, you know, look, to heck with all of this theory. Empirically, science works. Science just bloody works. And that's one of the most important things, right? I mean, as we said at the start, science gives us these life-saving vaccines. Science lets us fly across the country at 500 miles per hour. And you guys are lucky enough to live in an era where you can go online, you can order a Bluetooth salt shaker or a water bottle that will remind you that you're thirsty. And what <laughs> could possibly be better than that? Thank you.